Today we're with Eric from Mobile Must Have to talk about PepWave access points and the challenges and powering them and why, well, why might you want one of these? Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here with Eric from a Mobile Must Have, and we've been uh, geeking out in a rural New Hampshire. We had an opportunity to uh, r- rendezvous with these guys and um, play with some of their gear. Now, mobile Must Have is uh, one of our uh, you know, favorite vendors that caters to the RV market, selling things like uh, um, well, PepWave routers, access points, antennas, bundles, a whole bunch of other cool hardware and stuff. They tend to take good care of the RV marketplace and um, we've been friends with them for a while and it's fun to be able to get together and geek out and today's topic is access points and why you might want them and how to power them so first off you know, we want to say what is an access point like, yeah <laughs> well, thanks so much for the introduction that was great um, what is an access point that's a good we question three these, of them here these are <laughs> access points so uh, folks commonly can get confused between cellular, which is kind of your external from that cell tower, to a cellular-enabled modem or device, and then Wi-Fi is that local network that broadcasts internally. So we lost a little paper there. Um, and uh, in some situations, in an RV, we're sitting next to a, a fairly large 45-footer here, there can be some coverage issues with local devices, and access points can help you expand your local coverage or help you add it extra devices or a lot of devices right. in some cases. So particularly actually in, in the marine world where, where we find an access point in, in most RVs the the, the internal Wi-Fi antennas on some, one of these can usually provide pretty good Wi-Fi coverage everywhere inside. This is a PepWave uh, Max Transit router but on our boat like on our boat um, that, that Wi-Fi doesn't quite reach everywhere so adding access points gives a Wi-Fi in the different areas you need it. And the other big challenge with uh, PepWave hardware is if you want to use the Wi-Fi as WAN feature and put um, the Wi-Fi antennas from this on the roof to do long-range Wi-Fi, well, suddenly you've got your Wi-Fi antennas on the roof, which is giving really awful Wi-Fi inside your RV or inside your boat. So let this deal with the roof and put something like this inside to handle providing that coverage. Yeah, that's a very common use. You know, it's, oh, I want to connect to campground Wi-Fi. I'm using the roof antenna. And then there's a lot of other rigs with Wi-Fi, and that creates interference, and then your coverage inside the RV may not be as good as you'd like. Right. And so it does solve a, an actually pretty useful problem. And one thing that is really great, you know, there, there are ways to cobble this together with a lot of different gear other than PepWave gear. But if you put a PepWave access point and some PepWave routers, you connect them together, and the same user interface just automatically will remote control these. Now, what are the, the routers that will and will not have that automatic control interface? Yeah, good question. So um, the Balance series of PepLink routers, which is not very commonly used in the RV space. Except, except the Balance 20X is actually popular, popular with our Yeah, the so. Balance 20X is, is definitely one. The only kind of drawback is the no Wi-Fi win. Right, right. But because you have multiple modems and a really great price point, it can be a, a right. solid one. So the Balance series in general has the AP controller where you can plug these in and it will automatically provision your Wi-Fi name and passwords and everything just by mm-hmm. clicking it, powering it, and waiting 30 seconds. Um, when you move into the transit line like this one, this is a Transit Cat 18, they all also do have the Wi-Fi AP controller. So that can be um, a useful one. And then the Max... Um, the, the BR1, unfortunately, which is a very popular one, the BR1 line does not, the minis do not, including the transit mini, does not have uh, the ability to control these automatically. But apparently the BR1 Pro 5G will have the access point controller. So, okay, PepWave, you know, their, their product naming you know, sometimes gets a little weird there. But one, you can actually still set these up without an access point controller in here. It's just not automatic. You've got to manually do yes. some configuration. And we have detailed guides for customers yeah. on and videos on how to okay. set them up. It is very doable. It's just nice to be able to have it totally automatic. So, so this this is giving you you know your Wi-Fi inside. You you know put one of these in the front of the boat, and you know one of these in the, the salon, or one of these in the front of the RV, one of these in the back. Um, but so okay, there's three different options now. What are the three options here? You know, small, medium, large. What's the difference? Why would somebody want one of these? And you know, tell us about each of these three. Yeah. So it's kind of quite literally size <laughs> sort of matters in terms of two things. Um, Power, sort of the amount of output power or kind of transmission distance that they can can uh, can handle, 
and um, number of clients or devices or kind of speed um, is also different as you kind of get larger. So the the Mini is, is by far our most popular unit. Uh, it's the AP1, AP1 uh, AC Mini. AC think. Mini. Right. So this is kind of the, I, I think it's commonly referred to as Wi-Fi 5 yeah. uh, technology. 802.11 so, AC. Yes, exactly. Um, and this device, I believe, is, uh, is designed to support um, up to 50 or so devices. It's pretty powerful and can do quite a bit. Um, when you move into this one called the AP... Uh, what is AP1AX it? Lite. <laughs> they just keep adding excuse for us. <laughs> um, the AC Lite goes, steps you into the new Wi-Fi 6 technology. So you're uh, going to be using the, the newer standard. Right, so that's 802.11AX. So it's more efficient use of the local spectrum. More devices can be using high-speed Wi-Fi at the same time. Um, this is getting into kind of overkill for most needs, unless you really have very, very... De demanding networking going on. Yeah, I mean, there's some cool benefits that they claim, or your your your, I, your new iPhone battery will run more efficiently on the Wi-Fi. It may improve your battery life, life but it's yeah. it's definitely you start to get into 200 plus clients with devices yeah. like this. Most customers go into stuff like this if they if they just want a little more range or they have some type of structural issue blocking Wi-Fi or mm -hmm. something, and these can give you a little more output. Yeah, and this is the newer technology standard. So if people who just want to be more future-proof have Wi-Fi 6 instead of Wi-Fi 5, this is a way to go. But this one is, uh, how much? That's 299 And that's, that's 199 So So you've got a little bit of a trade-off here. And then you've got the, the big one, which is also, this is the AP1 AX. AX, no full. light. No yeah. light. So just the A-boy. <laughs> that is an enterprise device. Um, using that in an, in an RV... Maybe in like a food truck. <laughs> or if, you're, if, you're, you know, if you're providing coverage to everybody in the food court, perhaps, yeah. or you've got a more mega yacht scale de uh, deployment. Yeah, if you're um, uh, you know running a rally and you want to provide some Wi-Fi, that would be a great yeah. device. I mean, that has eight antennas in it. It's yeah. a monster, but yeah. it's it's got some heft to it. Yeah. So yeah, this is the eight, eight oh, still a Wi-Fi six eight hundred two dot eleven AX, but because it's got more antennas, it can basically serve more people at once at a further range. Again. Really, probably, you know, where are you even going to put this in a in an RV? It's kind of awkward. And normally, in like I guess an enterprise, they'll hang it from the ceilings and stuff inside of yes. the you know an office building floor, and this will cover an entire floor of people working. So probably overkill. But this one is what three ninety nine, three ninety nine, and that has two ninety nine, one ninety nine. Exactly. Yeah. The most powerful antenna we've we've used in Wi Fi. It's pretty <laughs> powerful, but again, probably overkill. Yeah. Now the other complication with these is. You know, you, you plug them in and they just work as far as you plug them on the back. They're all connected via, they're basically all the same. They all have an Ethernet port and a 12-volt power port. Um, only the Mini comes with a 12-volt power supply because I guess they assume that the higher-end ones are doing an enterprise deployment where you will be powering it over Ethernet, the power over Ethernet. And that is super <laughs> convenient because, like, in our boat, I just ran one Ethernet cable up to the, the front area where I needed more coverage, Plug that in, and it got its power and its connection all with one cable. I didn't have to find power up there. Yeah, one Ethernet cable. Yeah. Ding! You go, but you need to have something that is providing that power over Ethernet. Some of the Pepwave higher-end enterprise routers have their ports provide that because they're designed to deploy you know, this sort of stuff to an entire building. But most of the routers that our audience use don't provide power over Ethernet, so we end up with a challenge of, how, if you're going to get these and you don't want to actually have these kind of power supplies, how are you going to power them simply, particularly on a DC system? So what are the solutions for that? Yeah, that's a great point. And all of our bundles and our most common routers, as you said, don't supply that PoE power. Um, and Peplink has certain PoE devices, but they don't typically run on 12 volts. So right. now you're having to involve an inverter or, or shore power in the situation. And we typically don't want to set up an internet solution where if you turn off your inverter, inverter the, internet goes, the internet goes down, especially because the internet's often monitoring the coach and monitoring <laughs> your ability to use the inverter. So we've uh, we've we've got a couple solutions that, that help you with that. Okay, let's show, show something. Yeah, so this is the, the basic one you got, right? Yeah, so this is, they call this a two-port switch, but I call it a PoE injector. Okay. And kind of very high level, we've got 12-volt input. It'll actually accept up to 24-volt input here. Um, which is from your house batteries. And then that will uh, have an input here on the data port that goes to the PEP wave so that you can pass the data. Okay. And then it will inject the power on the output. And that would go to 
up to your uh, to your access, access point. point. So land port on the pep wave to data out to access point. And as long as you've got those to the house batteries with a fuse, you are good to go. It's got a couple other kind of interesting features up its sleeve. This pigtail here will actually power the router itself. Go right into there. So you so. can pop that right into there. And if you have one kind of main media closet, now you've got one set of 12 volt wires that are gonna power your router as well as your access point. So this is kind of like a really nice all-in-one guy that, that's uh, in a yeah. sub $100 price point. So yeah, that, that's actually pretty great for a DC powered PoE. Now, if you want to have multiple access points or you've got more demanding needs, that's the next one here, right? Yeah, so then we've got this guy. Again, same concept. You can put your DC power in. This will accept up to a 48 volt input if you've got some, you know, like your your uh, your rig runs a 48 volt, so you could run that. That's actually true. Yeah, our, our van, the Volta van, has uh, actually, well, I think it's a technically 50. I mean, yeah, maybe it might be too high, but our boat is at 24 volts, so it'd be great to put right. that straight in. And they usually have a stepper down for yeah. lights and stuff, so you could yeah. find 12 volts. But yeah. anyway, DC power in. And then you've got your eight PoE ports here for up to 165 watts, which is typically six to eight access points. So you have these scattered all over your RV if you really want to go crazy, um, one in each room, um, or all over your boat, which is much more likely because you've got different levels and things are more spread yeah. out. And you, just because this is PoE doesn't mean you have to plug in PoE devices. So a lot of our customers will actually just plug their desktop computers into the other ports but then they use one or two ports for the access points and then having one switch that's DC powered can get them kind of the complete solution. Nice, that's yeah. a, and that's under $200? Yeah, that this or? is a 199 right. price point and, um, and has worked out really well for us and it's an industrial quality product that has mounting brackets and is designed to be used for mobile use. So it's gonna nice. put up with the heat and stuff. Nice, so, so that helps you kind of put all the, the pieces together because traditionally this is something that's kind of an advanced deployment. This is overkill for a lot of people and then for even the people who need it, it's been kind of hard to figure out, well, how do I power it? How do I put the pieces together? How do you do it? Um, but once you actually get the pieces together, I, you know, we've been using this on our boat and having this little AC Mini um, uh, solved our coverage issues inside the boat. And it lets us have the radio on our router focus on Wi-Fi as WAN. Because having one radio do Wi-Fi as WAN and host your local network is a recipe for being doing a poor job at both of them. So. Yeah. I think that's kind of it's doing this a lot of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of kind of the the basics here. Um, there's a lot more that you know we, we've we've got uh, some more kind of tutorials on our site of just diving deeper into this stuff on our gear guide for the uh, uh, Pepwave AP AC ones. That's all in one place there, and then of course at Mobile Must Have they well they sell all this stuff. They've got a lot of the, the their, their details on these products. So um, I think I think that's basically it. So. Yeah, I think we're we're good. Thank you guys so much for watching and geeking out with us with, with access points. It's fun to, to play and get a chance to actually touch all the different sizes and see. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which, which ones are practical. It's fun to play with them all in person. So it's, thanks for having us out to your space here in rural New Hampshire to geek out and play. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. These videos are brought to you by our premium members from Mobile Internet Aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.